Hello. Um, so I've been studying uh, infernology for the last three years or so. Um, I think at least three, three years, three or four years. Um, basically, the underworld traditions. Um, <coughs> ever since I learned um, from, you know, Indian people from. Uh, Hindus and from Tamils that uh, that the underworld is America that uh, basically the underworld concept is antipodal it refers to not uh, lands inside the earth but lands on the underside of the earth on the opposite side of the earth and um, you know, which made sense to me pretty quickly once I, uh, once I read that. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, there were Indian people, um, probably, probably one of my friends posted, one of my friends from India posted that, um, in, uh, you know, on Facebook or something, article about that or something, and I had read it. And so once I realized that that was the most plausible, um, you know, that it was uh, very believable and and uh, seemed to be pretty solid, um, I extrapolated that to the rest of infernology as like the global traditions of uh, you know, relating to the underworld. And, you know, it's one of the most universal traditions. Um, it's why people like Joseph Campbell referred to it as the monomyth. They said that it was like the earliest archetype, you know, that it must have been the one of the most or maybe the most ancient cultural uh, element because it was so universal. It's so universal, and um, so they um, you know like in and I and I quickly was able to confirm it just by glancing at other um, you know information relating to the other traditions like the Greek and the uh, you know, Sumerian, that they all, they all sailed to reach this underworld. So this idea that the underworld is inside the earth um, is not really tenable and never, <coughs> never really has been tenable. I mean, there's some ambiguity because, you know, there's some time, there are some traditions where people can reach it through a cave. Like basically, I, I think, you know, and that's more of a, that's probably more of a symbolic idea that the idea that you could go through a cave and come out the opposite side of the planet. Um, but either way, and, and there might have been some traditions that maybe did portray the underworld as if it was inside, you know, somehow inside the earth. But in general, it was pretty clear that you know, the underworld was just an opposite world. It was just a con. You know, it was this pretty much like Afro Eurasia, where where uh, it, at least you know for the the underworld of the Afro Eurasians was pretty similar to their world. It was just upside down, and it was on the opposite side of the planet, and it was across the water. So it's America, um, and. And equally for the Americans, their underworld was Afro-Eurasia. Um, so, it, you know, I was quickly able to confirm that that fit. You know, there's nothing that really proved that wrong. I mean, there were elements in the stories of the underworld that that you could say don't fit. Like there's a, stories of, uh, I don't know, animals and maybe in the underworld that uh, weren't really in America. But I think a lot of that has to do with um, celestial cosmology. 
because you know the um like the planets and stars that were um but not below the horizon and that were uh, retrograde maybe were considered to be in the underworld so i think like like the planets were divided into those which were in the world and in the underworld in heaven and in hell kind of and and then they switched off like so some would fall down to hell and then others would come back to heaven and just dependent where they were positioned at any time um and hell was not like what we think of as hell like because hell was a goddess hell was greatly revered um I mean, there was a mix. There was some traditions that kind of uh, portrayed it negatively, um, but there were a lot of a lot of traditions that portrayed it positively. And even in for the even in the most negative traditions, it's still basically the premier destination of the afterlife, or uh, you know, or certainly one of the premier destinations for the afterlife. You know, like in Sumerian tradition, it's, um, you know, it's portrayed as a somewhat gloomy place, but at the same time, it's the, it's the uh, destination of choice for the afterlife. So, um, so anyway, and then eventually I found maps of America um, from ancient Egypt like, you know, the Tomb 100 at Heracompolis, 5,500-year-old map of America and East Asia and uh, Western Africa. Um, but, and then, and a bunch of later maps from like, you know, 4,000 years ago and 3,000 years ago. So, um, so yeah, I confirmed that. And, but I was often suspicious whether... Um, because they they often divided the way they divided the world you know just for geometric purposes you know they divide they'd have the four directions and then they divide the world into like seven levels often and then the underworld into seven levels and i mean the the number of levels uh can easily vary because uh you know you can divide something however you want to divide it but that's I think what the pyramids were, I think that's what the ziggurats were, um, and that's what, you know, Buddhist and Hindu temples tended to be representations of that cosmology um, of the earth, basically, uh, with the world being the pyramid, you know, the like, say, like the pyramid at Giza, I would say that the visible parts of the pyramids there are probably representations of the of Afro Eurasia, and and possibly also the the sky, kind of abutting that side of the planet, and then the and then the huge uh, part of the pyramid that goes underground, which is uh, at least like half the pyramid is underground. Um, you know the shafts. Uh, thing in the in Khufu's pyramid it's closed off like the shaft that goes into the lower pier uh, the lower chambers but that would be you know the kind of reverse pyramid of the underworld and um, so you know like and that's pretty explicit in a lot of Buddhist and Hindu stuff where their pyramids are or you know their temples are considered to be representations of like uh, Vishnu and of uh, like the um, Mount Meru, which are cosmological and um, at least include the earth, like include the earth and probably um, the sky as well, you know, because it tended to be that each part of the earth. I mean, each part of the earth kind of does have parts of the sky that correspond to it. So um, they were e able to kind of represent both at the same time. Um, 
so anyway, I knew that knowing that pyramids were, you know, are an important symbol for uh, Freemasons, and of course, knowing that Freemasonry is, um, you know, based around ancient stonemasonry, um, you know, it made me wonder how if they might know some of this information, if the Freemasons might be aware of some of this. And, um, and just, you know, the fact that they're all about ancient cosmo or ancient, you know, symbolism and that, and this seems to be one of the main, uh, focuses of ancient symbolism was around the underworld and infernology. So, um, you know, infernology is for like inferno means below. You know the infernal infernal realms mean the 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 realms below. Um, I used to somehow think it meant fiery because I always, you always inferno is always like well I guess they say a fiery inferno, um, but actually in Dante's Inferno it's frozen at the southernmost part you know Antarctica. Um, anyway. So like, I just was thinking that maybe, maybe I, I was treading on their, you know, the same ground as them, but I didn't really know. So anyway, I, after a few years of studying that, uh, studying the underworld and infernology, I, I ended up, uh, somebody's, a friend sent me a video about Freemasonry and it was saying that in the, um, initiation for craft masonry i think even which i think craft i think that implies that it's well i'm not really sure i know there's operative so i'm not really sure what that means it might mean not it might mean operative masonry where um but maybe that's just a name for freemasonry so anyway, it's for craft masonry and, but if it is, if it is referring to some, uh, you know, to operative masonry, it seems to at least be the basis for the modern, uh, Masonic initiation rituals, uh, to a large extent. And, um, so anyway, I was, it was a video, um, where somebody was, uh, reading the lecture that um, Rudolf Steiner gave to the Theosophical Society in like, you know, the early 1900s, I believe, about uh, Freemasonry. And um, so Rudolf Steiner, he was like a theosophist. I think he was the founder of the Waldorf schools. Um, so... And he might have also been connected to permaculture. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so, um, and theosophists were kind of like the founders of the New Age movement, you could say. They were like, uh, you know, esotericists in the 1800s. Um, I mean, they still exist, I think. But yeah, <laughs> that was their heyday was kind of 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and so, and, you know, full disclosure, my, my dad was raised theosophist, I guess, or my dad was, uh, his mom was, his mom's mom was a theosophist and maybe his mom, basically his mom was raised theosophist, at least partly. So he was as well. <clears throat> so he, you know, he attended, uh. Theosophical Lodge and Presbyterian Church and Quaker Meeting. Um, and I'm also descended from uh, Freemasons. Uh, at least my mom's dad's dad was a Freemason in uh, East Tennessee, John Campbell. Um, so, you know, I don't know a huge amount of, I mean, I know probably much more than the average person, but, you know, I never, um, I never joined Freemasonry. 
Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm starting, uh, I, I was watching this video, so Steiner said that in the initiation, just to enter, to become a, um, to become a, an apprentice. So maybe this is operative mason. So this is literally maybe the, the way to become a stone mason in like, you know, the 1400s or something was um, the, the initiation, you come into the lodge, they take you into some chamber, probably down some stairs or something, to some chamber, they make you uh, wait and contemplate. Um, they put like a, something over your eyes, I think, and they, oh, they take all the, the metal they take away all of your metal and jewels and whatever, or like any kind of silver, or gold, or any kind of metal, I guess. Um, and then they, um, I think they they do something with the, you know your pants, roll up your pants to the knee on one leg, or I don't know some weird thing. Uh, so anyway, then you go in and. Um, I think they ask you some questions like, are you sure you want to, you know, you're down for this, whatever. And then, um, all, by the way, don't, don't like suicide me, Freemason people. Sorry. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, this was on the internet. Okay. I'm just telling people what's like already on the internet anyway. So you, you go and then they, um, and then they say some people come with like a big frame of some kind. So I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's like a big frame and then they somehow they grab the applicant. So I don't know if this is exactly how they still do it, but, um, but they would grab the applicant or they would throw the applicant through the frame. And um, while they would, while they were doing it, they would, make some eerie noise or some like disturbing noise and um and then they would yell or they would say to them the they were being thrown into hell and so um you know obviously from a christian perspective that sounds pretty that sounds pretty fucked up like that would scare the shit out of people um but I mean, I guess it probably, maybe even for the pagans, it would still scare the shit out of them because it's like they're dying. But for Christians, it's worse because for Christians, hell is not just the place of death. It's also, so it's only the place of death for evil people. So they, this probably created a lot of confusion among Masons and among Christians because they don't, you know, if they don't realize that hell was not was not uh, originally considered to be like a bad you know a bad place or any kind of place of punishment or anything like that that it was the place where every you know where abraham and every uh saint basically went and even jesus went when he died um although supposedly he went and and conquered conquered it and 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 freed all the dead or something like that um but I think that's, yeah, it's a symbolic thing or something, or that was for him to pretend that he had fulfilled the, um, the uh, day of resurrection, that that would have been the day of resurrection or something like that. I don't know. But um, so they throw them through the frame and they say, we are, you are being thrown into hell. And then they go down stairs, um, and and somehow when they're thrown through the frame, it's like the frame is like the like they bring the frame past them as well, so it makes it makes them feel like they're going even faster than they are, I think. And with the sound, um, and then they they go down stairs, but there's some mechanism with the stairs. So it makes it seem like they went down much further and then they, 
fall like into a shaft and then that's made to seem like it's much further than it is uh so they feel like they're going way way down like basically you know around the earth or something um and uh so it's all virtual reality um and it's based on virtual reality in that sense and and it seems to be really actually ancient because i was often skeptical like how ancient is freemasonry because i know they always say like oh we're super ancient and stuff and but a lot of times when i looked at their symbols i'm like these symbols don't seem that ancient like i haven't seen these symbols in ancient stuff that much but i mean regardless of what specific symbols they use the way the symbols are used does seem to be ancient you know like they're basically uh it's basically cosmology a lot of this or most or all of it is cosmology cosmological symbolism so it's basically symbols to represent the world and you know the planet and the the cosmos so um so they use that kind of virtual reality and and even the virtual reality i think is ancient you know i don't think that's a new part of it it's probably toned down from what it was at some point because i know that like 2000 years ago there were temples in um in the mediterranean where like in in uh, greece or or italy um where like i think there was a temple for astarte or something like that that i was reading about where it was basically like a ziggurat type of thing um like a pyramid type thing with internal passageways going down into it and you know the high priest or some kind of priest would like dress up as the god like a dress up as a bird god like maybe the sun in the form of a bird or something like that um and then they would actually um ascend from the lowest like level of the ziggurat or of the temple um and fly out and emerge and you know resurrected because you know they would probably undergo at least some kind of symbolic death going down and then reach the bottom and then be revived like in in most of the underworld traditions where the sun is revived or venus or all these gods are revived in the underworld um so he would be so the yeah the priest in in the role of the god would be revived and would fly out in front of the onlookers who would you know be quite probably affected by this and there would be music uh that would you know it would all be you know there would be music there would maybe be incense there would be a lot of different aspects to this experience and the um and the the god priest that was flying out would fly by use of technology like by they had a mechanism um like wires that would you know the same as are used in like or you know have been used in hollywood and used in broadway and stuff like that were just wires that can make somebody look like they're flying that technology is not new tech it's literally ancient tech so it's been used in that exact uh, way for thousands of years <clears throat> so it makes sense that hollywood was founded by freemasons and that it was has been dominated by freemasons because hollywood because freemasons have basically been creating movies for thousands of years you know they and the people that they learned from um so you know so that's quite interesting that this suggests that same type of ancient technology that Cause that 2000 year old one like the the wires and whatever that they use that we have the record of like there's no reason to suspect that that was invented 2000 years ago and there's every reason to assume that it probably is as old as ziggurats are which is to say 
uh, 6,000 or more years old. Um, you know, there is a lot of, there are actually a lot of technology that's that old or older that's been lost. So, um, so yeah, I think this type of virtual reality initiation experience was probably um, at least used for initiating priests uh, for the last like 6,000 years or more. Um, and I'm not sure whether the general laity would be involved in it. I mean, they certainly would be more connected to it than modern norm normal people are like, Nowadays, like all this esotericism is secretive and and then the regular plebes like are not even exposed to it. Whereas in the real way that it's, I think the real way that it was is supposed to be done is it's supposed to be permeating all throughout society. You know, maybe that wasn't possible in modern, you know, in uh, with Freemasonry because of Christianity and because paganism is you know seen as devil worship by the christians and hell is seen as you know evil by the christians and therefore the freemasons who basically are pagans that worship hell just like all pagans worship america or worship the antipodal land you know american pagans worship afro eurasia i mean pagans worship all lands so but there is a, a very particular focus on the antipodal lands in paganism. Um, so, you know, this, um, this shows, I mean, like one, one aspect of, uh, of the Masonic initiation is that, that uh, aspirants are, you know, people who are aspiring to join um, are placed in a coffin. They're told to lay down inside a coffin. And, um, and that also represents the underworld. You know, there's like, uh, there are a lot of like paintings that are based on Masonic symbolism, which show like the steps of the world and the underworld basically. And then at the very bottom is the coffin. So that clearly represents, um, represents the underworld. And um, so that's interesting. You know, my, my dad uh, was in a, a frat, and a lot of frats are based on Freemasonry, partly at least. Uh, you know, he was part of Kai Sai at uh, Amherst. And... Uh, and they had him lay inside a coffin, he told me. So, and that's the same thing that they do with Skull and Bone Society at Yale. But there's probably, you know, countless, uh, I mean, a lot of, you know, modern clubs and societies came out of Freemasonry from like modern unions to modern, you know, the, the Young Turks, uh, you know, out of Turk and all that, and the United Irishmen, and maybe even the Young Irelanders. I'm not sure. Um, so it's a, you know it's given rise to a diverse lot of groups. I mean, arguably it gave rise to the Nation of Islam indirectly, and and arguably to the KKK indirectly. So it's basically anybody who wanted a group, they just tended to base it on Freemasonry because that was the kind of preeminent. Uh, private club um, so anyway I guess I'll leave this I'll try to cut this off but uh, you know basically now you know I mean like in the idea of like going to the underworld and then coming back it's a hugely important thing in ancient religion because the gods the immortals that's that's the big thing that they do. You know, the gods like the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, that's what they all do. All of them except the, you know, the Dacons or whatever, like the northern fixed stars or maybe some southern fixed stars that just uh, stay, you know, above the horizon. But um, let's see, I'm not sure if this is going to, seems like it might cut me off now. 
All right. Well, anyway, um, that's the tale. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. This phone is weird, and it just likes to cut off my videos. It likes to delete my videos. It sucks. I guess someday I'll find a way to just delete everything off my phone, except so I'll just have that little bit of extra space, I guess, because I guess this Samsung Galaxy 11 or whatever it is was made with no space on it. Just awesome so anyway but um now you're a freemason basically you're a grandmaster you know the deal it's all about going to america and coming back or going to afro eurasia and coming back to america and being reborn like the sun is reborn each morning from the underworld um and that's what the pyramids are about and so yeah take care Peace.